Hey there, Mickey Mack is here with Out the Back Door. I'm going to go foraging today for wild violets. I'm going to make wild violet jelly. So come along and join me. I'm in my garden up front here. And I see that I have a lot of violets in my flower garden that I never planted. So I'm going to be picking these to make jelly. When we're picking the violets, we don't need the stems, just the top portion. I've got all of the violets picked out of my front garden and I wandered around down by the pond here and I only found a few. So now I'm going to be heading up the road to go visit my friend and she told me that she has a bunch. So let's go. Okay, so we have got violets scattered all over my neighbor's yard and they're both helping me pick. What a blessing. But being there all over, we're not just going to sit in one place. We keep traveling and picking. All right, I'm all done picking the violets. I managed to get enough from our home and down at the neighbor's. Actually, I have close to a double batch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through really quick and make sure that I don't have any stems in there at all. And I'll pick those off because all we want to do is use the blossoms. Whenever I go foraging, I like to take these nylon mesh bags with me. They have a drawstring on them to keep everything enclosed in. And they are breathable. So this is actually really great for picking any type of a floral or if you're going to go hunting mushrooms. If you're interested in anything like this, because they do come in different sizes, I'll leave a link below in the description box so you can order them. I sorted through all the flower blossoms and made sure all the stems were taken off. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them into a mason jar because we are going to pour boiling water over them and we're going to make a tea out of it. So we're actually infusing these. I have two cups of violet flowers in my one quart mason jar right now. I'm going to be pouring over four cups of boiling water. I put a cap on top of the jar and now I'm gonna store it in a cool dark spot I'm going to choose to put mine in the refrigerator. You're going to let this steep for 24 hours. And as you can see, the liquid is starting to turn blue already. It's been a little over 24 hours that we've been steeping the violets in the water. And now it's time to strain them. What I'm going to do, I'm just using a funnel into another jar. And I'm actually going to use one of my homemade jelly straining bags. So I just set that in there. And we will dump our contents in. Yesterday I had mentioned um, that I was doing a quart. And I realized I had enough petals in here to do two quarts. So I put this in a half gallon jug. I'll still give you the instructions of how to do um, the regular quart. And what I'm going to do is squeeze the bag to get all that beautiful purple liquid out of there. Okay, now that I've strained the violet tea through the jelly bag, I've gathered the rest of my ingredients together that I'll need. We need sugar, 100% lemon juice, and pectin. I buy my pectin in little jars like this instead of the boxes because it's more economical to me. Actually, this full container of pectin will make 22 half pints. I'll leave the complete recipe for the violet jelly at the end of the video. I'm shining a light behind the violet tea just so you can see what color it ended up when I strained it. And now I'm going to pour the lemon juice into it. And I want you to see the chemical reaction and the beautiful color that it turns. Is that pretty or what? 
This is the actual color that it turned. And you don't have to do this in a jar. You can just pour your lemon juice and your tea all together in a pot. I just did this to demonstrate the color that it was going to turn. I have everything else gathered together, the jars that I'm going to be using. I'm going to use regular size lids and bands. I've got my measure cup, a ladle for the jelly, a lifter. I also have my tablespoon to measure my pectin and a magnet to get my lids out of the warm water when I get done. I realized that ball, cur, whatever they are now, um, say that you don't have to heat up your lids. I still do. Okay, I've got the tea heating up in here and now I'm going to add the pectin. I'm going to show you a little trick. When you're putting your pectin in, sprinkle it in the top and whisk it at the same time so you don't get any lumps. And you're going to bring this to a boil. We're going to boil it for one minute. After the one minute, then we are going to add our sugar. While I'm waiting for this to come up to a boil, I'm also heating up the water in my water bath can or so the jars are going to be able to go in immediately. You know the old saying, a watch pot never boils? Boy, is that true. <laughs> Here's a little tip for you. Did you realize that apples are full of pectin? So if you don't have any store-bought pectin, you could always substitute pure apple juice for the pectin when you're making your jellies and jams. All right, we finally have a boil, so now we're going to add our sugar. And once we do, we're going to stir that up really well, and we're going to let it come to a rolling boil and boil it one to two minutes. Okay, I'm at a rolling boil right now, so I'm going to time it for two minutes. During this process, we have a lot of foam that's building up on the top, and some people actually add a little bit of butter to it in order to help keep the foaming down some. All right, our timer went off. Two minutes is done, and we are going to remove this from the heat and let it sit for five minutes. We've got a lot of foam in here on the top. I'm just going to gently go around. And I'm going to scrape out. I'm just putting it in a little bowl but we're gonna continue this process until all of this is off. Okay, I have all the foam skimmed off and it's all sitting in a bowl here. And the only reason you wanna skim that off is because when you're jarring it up, it looks nice and pretty when it's just clear instead of having foamy on the top. You can leave it if you want. And actually, don't throw that out, you can eat it. We're going to start jarring this up. We're going to leave a quarter inch headspace. And I think this is just kind of fun making like a specialty type jelly. All right, I'll be right back as soon as I get these all finished. Okay, we've got it all jarred up. Now I've got a wet cloth. I am going to wipe all the rims to make sure we don't have anything sticky and it is gelling up fast. Once I get all the rims wiped down, then I'll put the tops on and the bands. The water's boiling in the canner already. I see these are setting up already. I'm using regular metal lids today because I will be giving quite a few of these away. And then that way I don't have to worry about trying to get my Tatler Liz back. As far as water bathing, if you don't have a water bath canner, that's fine. You can use like a Dutch oven. Anything that the water is going to be deep enough in order to cover your jars by one inch over the top. I've got a rack in the bottom of mine that the jars are going to sit on. And if you don't have a rack, you can also put like a towel in the bottom to cushion between the bottom of your pan and the jars. All right, we'll get the bands on. Fingertip tight. Everybody's fingertip tight is different. And remember, the purpose of the band is just to hold the lid down while it's canning. If you have more jars than what fit into the bottom of your rack, you can actually double stack 
You need to put another tray in between or another towel. Okay, let's get these into the canner. Okay, the last one's going in. I've turned my flame up on high and I'm going to cover it. That'll keep the heat in there better. It'll come up to a boil and once it does, then we're going to start timing at 10 minutes. So while I'm waiting for it to heat up and come to a boil and process for 10 minutes, now is the time I always do my cleanup. Sure makes it a lot easier than waiting until the very end. I just want to show you quick um, how thick that's the foam that I scraped off. And actually, you can still eat this. You can put it on a roll, toast, whatever you want. Or, that's some interesting jelly. When you take them out of the can, or if you've got excess liquid on top, don't tilt it. Rule of thumb is you're going to let these sit 12 to 24 hours to cool completely. And then you can take the bands off and wash them with nice warm soapy water. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be leaving you the recipe at the end of the video here. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell, share, and give me a thumbs up. I thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day. God bless!